Shalom. Welcome back to Issachar Forum. This is Les, and uh, glad to be with you again. We're here with our Elisha Vision report and update on biblical prophecy. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Yahovah, we ask for your guidance and your Holy Spirit to be with our words as we look at the events going on this week in the world in the light of biblical prophecy. In the name of your Son, Jesus, the Son of God, Yeshua ben Yehovah, we pray. Amen. Well, I'm glad you're here, and uh, there's a lot to get uh, into, so let's get started. I always like to start with my commentary, uh, which is on my blog. It's You can find it at www.elishavision.wordpress.com. And uh, I wrote a couple this week that I want to draw your attention to. First is Sheep and Goat Nations. Uh, I made a point that uh, a lot of people, I think, are overlooking when they talk about the last day's battles and Armageddon and all, all of that. A lot of people think all of the nations of the earth are going to be coming against Israel. And uh, I, I question that. I think it's actually all the nations of the ancient world, the old old world of all the empires. I think all of those nations will be gathered against Israel. But I think the nations in the outer periphery around the rest of the earth are going to actually have a choice to make, whether to stand with God and Israel or with the enemies of Israel. And uh, I believe that's uh, kind of spoken to directly by Jesus in Matthew 25, where he talks about dividing the sheep and the goat nations. And the verse that's overlooked uh, is verse 40 in that passage, where he says, And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. That's typically interpreted to refer to other Christians, any Christians, but I think it could refer to Jesus making a reference to his brethren in the natural, the Israeli Jewish people. And uh, and so how we treat Israel, I think, as nations determines our uh, judgments and so forth as nations. So that's a kind of a different way of looking at it. I submit that to you. and You can uh, study it and decide for yourself if you like. Uh, also, I uh, last night I put up a Dry Bones cartoon. Of course, you know how much I appreciate uh, those cartoons. And this one is... Uh, Got a picture of a of a U.S. ship, and it says, "In a show of force, America has sent an amphibious assault ship with a thousand Marines to the coast of Libya, just one year and eight months after the U.S. ambassador in Benghazi Benghazi called for help." And it goes and talks about a story that right now the U.S. has a ship off the coast in case they need to evacuate our uh, embassy in Tripoli, and uh, so it's still uh, an issue there in that country and. Uh, you can read the story there on my blog. Well, I want to make a couple more comments about the Pope's visit to uh, Israel last week. Um, there's an article on Yahoo News from Reuters that says, Pope weaves through Mideast obstacle course as visit ends and talks about uh, how the different uh, groups he met with required different uh, uh, encounters. Um, last week we talked about a picture of him by, uh, by the wall in Bethlehem and saying, uh, that said free Palestine on it, and he seemed to kind of lean toward the Palestinians there. And then uh, then there's another article uh, following that uh, in Israel Today magazine that, that says, uh, it actually gives a, a quote from a book that the, quote that the, that the Pope wrote, uh, and uh, the name of his, uh, it was a theological dictum called Evangelii Gaudium, and uh, in it, he actually uh, makes some very strong statements about Judaism. He says, we cannot consider Judaism as a foreign religion, nor do we include the Jews among those called to turn from idols and to serve the true God. In this, it confirms the continued contribution of divine truth that comes through the treasures of wisdom, which flow from their encounter with his word. And, uh, and it goes on to say, uh, emphatically, he denounced, two of the major uh, theological positions of Catholicism. Uh, one of them is replacement theology and the other is deicide. Uh, replacement theology speaks of that the church has replaced Israel and there's no more place for Israel in God's plan, that they uh, have no place in his kingdom. And the Pope in his book actually renounced that position. And also the position the Catholic Church has taken down through the centuries that that the uh, that the Jews are guilty of deicide for killing the Son of God. And uh, he says that uh, he, he also re rejected that uh, position that all Jews are responsible for uh, 
the death of Jesus. So uh, definitely having uh, two different positions, of, you know, having and he managed to kind of get through the trip without uh, he, he alien, alienated everybody, but he also kind of was a friend to everybody. And uh, interesting to see what's going to happen. Of course, one thing you might have read about is that he invited uh, Abbas and uh, President Perez of Israel to a meeting in his uh, in the Vatican in his own residence uh, just to pray, not to have any political things, but to pray. And so uh, still a lot of question marks about uh, the future uh, and the Pope and his, he does seem to be kind of cozying up to Islam in a very dangerous way. So uh, we'll have to keep watching that. There also is a neat, neat little side story uh, that uh, when when Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, was meeting with the Pope in Jerusalem, uh, he said, he told the Pope, he says, Jesus was here in this land. He spoke Hebrew. And uh, the uh, Pope said, no, Aramaic. <laughs> he spoke Aramaic. And Netanyahu shot back, he spoke Aramaic, but he knew Hebrew. Uh, and that was kind of interesting. So the scholars actually, uh, in, in getting back into it and looking it up and so forth, basically decided they were both right. <laughs> he spoke Hebrew and Aramaic. And I thought that was just an interesting little uh, side story. Well, the big news uh, today, really, in the, in the U.S. and in the world is the freeing of a U.S. prisoner that's been held for five years, uh, Sergeant Bergdahl. And uh, the uh, there, there, of course, re there's rejoicing that he's uh, back with his family or will be after debriefing and so forth. He's now in Germany. But uh, there's more and more questions are coming up about the whole situation. Um, there is that there evidently uh, when when President Obama made the agreed to the exchange and released five prisoners from Gitmo, uh, he violated a law that had been passed by Congress. Uh, also, the president of Afghanistan was livid with anger because he wasn't consulted either. This was done uh, around an in run around everybody and no, none of the proper channels were were acknowledged. And then we have the report on uh, Israel National News this morning that the Taliban welcomes their victory over the U.S. after the exchange. And what, what hasn't been emphasized as much is that the five Gitmo prisoners that were released were top leaders of the Taliban uh, all the way back to before 9-11. Uh, the Taliban government that, that was so brutal against their citizens and particularly against women and children. Uh, these are the same leaders that we've just released. Uh, from Gitmo, and uh, and then there's it, it gets even worse in the, in some of the reports coming out now. Uh, I was watching it live when when the father of the released prisoner at the White House with with President Obama actually spoke in Arabic, and uh, in in the transcript of that uh, that announcement, uh, the White House didn't did not refer to that. Uh, portion that was in Arabic by Bergdahl's father and uh, didn't give a translation, didn't say anything about it, didn't even refer to it. But uh, the translation of it was actually, uh, it, it's this is found uh, in Jihad Watch today. Uh, at the event, end of the event, the soldier's father, Bob Bergdahl, recited the most frequent phrase in the Quran. Uh, and uh, I don't want to repeat it, but it means in the name of the God of Islam, and it mentions the God of Islam by name. Uh, it says, in the name of the God of Islam, most gracious, most compassionate. Uh, and so, in other words, it was praise for the God of Islam. And then, of course, Obama hugged him afterwards and so forth. And uh, and then the Taliban in their news conference saying after the trade, due to the benevolence of blank, blank, the God of Islam and the sacrifices of the heroic and courageous Mujahideen of the Islamic Emirate. And uh, now... So it, it gets even stickier there. But then there's a further report also on Jihad Watch. Did the U.S. trade five jihadists for one jihadist? And I can't go into all the details here, but basically the claim is that uh, after he was captured, the Taliban in, in 2010, four years ago, claimed that he had converted to Islam and was teaching bomb making to its jihadists. And, uh, and also it re referred to the fact that that the sergeant's father uh, is also a convert to Islam and has been calling for the release of jihadists in Guantanamo and as implied that American troops are killing Afghan children. So that's some pretty serious charges. And 
And the way he was actually originally left the U.S. base in Afghanistan, he just walked off the base. So there's an awful lot of questions to be answered, and there, I'm sure there'll be some serious investigations to follow. Uh, but uh, in kind of the worst case scenario, it would be un unbelievable, wouldn't it, if we actually gate released five Taliban leaders for basically a stealth jihadist, if he turns out to actually be dedicated to their position now and and we bring him back to the United States and he's capable of teaching bomb making. I mean, that's I don't know if that's all true, but it's it's pretty serious and I, I ought to be investigated. Well, moving away from that, let's go on to some of the other leaders in the Muslim world. There are kind of several stories here. Um, there's an article uh, in the Daily Caller this week uh, saying that Iran's supreme leader, uh, Iran's supreme leader, the uh, Ayatollah, uh, says jihad will continue until America is no more. There's another report of uh, that similar threat uh, in uh, Israel National News, Arul Sheva, says Iran threatens to annihilate the U.S. Excuse me, uh, Iran threatens to annihilate Israel if the U.S. attacks. And so they're kind of uh, saber rattling. And of course, this is the same time we're supposedly having negotiations with them about their nuclear program. And the question is, you know, which, which do you believe? Uh, and history proves that their public statements are actually what they really intend to do, and they do. Islam has carried it out through history. In fact, there's actually a principle in the Quran that before you kill your enemy, you have to give him a chance to convert. If he converts, then you won't kill him. And so we're hearing that every time uh, they threaten us. Uh, they're giving us a chance to re repent from our Christianity or Judaism and, and become Muslims. God forbid that we should ever do that. Uh, Deb Kefile has a report uh, this week uh, about Nasrallah. Now, he's the leader of the Hezbollah terrorist group in Lebanon who's been fighting in Syria for Assad and the Syrian government. Uh, and now they're actually moving towards Israel's border, trying to uh, drive out al-Qaeda, <laughs> who they consider enemies, uh, who are on, also down there in the area of uh, the Syrian and Israeli border, the Golan Heights. And uh, so Nasrallah uh, just recently this week gave a speech, uh, and and Israel is taking it literally. The Israeli military chiefs are taking literally uh, his threats uh, because uh, he made some pretty strong threats, uh, saying that uh, you know they intend to uh, be ready to attack and attack Israel and and drive into uh, you know take over Israel and so forth, which they've been saying for years, but being said again in a recent speech. Meanwhile, even within Israel, an Arab member of the Knesset, which would be like a member of Congress in our case, uh, actually asked the Palestinian Authority for help defeating the Jewish state. Uh, speaking to a Hamas journal, the minister of Knesset calls to turn world opinion against the Jewish state law, warns it would rule that Jews have legitimate rights. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> and uh, his name is uh, Masoud Ganaim. Ra'am Ta'al, uh, and uh, he appealed for help in fighting the Jewish state law proposed by, proposed by Prime Minister Netanyahu on May 1st, which would uh, affix Israel's status as the nation state of the Jewish people in basic law. And so even within Israel, you have these kinds of things happening. Um, then we have uh, a group of Islamists on Al-Aqsa, uh, on the Temple Mount, by the Al-Aqsa Mosque, saying... Uh, liberate Jerusalem from Jewish filth. The Islamic uh, Hizbub Tahrir calls upon the army of Pakistan and the Islamic nation to liberate Jerusalem from Jewish filth. Um, with this going on in every group, uh, every terrorist group, every religious group opposing Israel, uh, how in the world can the U.S. or anybody with a reasonable uh, thinking, a re logical mind, think that there's any way Israel could make have a peace treaty with these people. Uh, there's also uh, in uh, Israel National News this week, the, the Saudis could turn to Pakistan for nukes. Uh, Congress was warned of this this week by uh, a Florida uh, Congresswoman, uh, Rose Lytton, uh, and uh, she says the Sunni states may abandon Washington, and uh, experts say Saudis under threat may procure nuclear weapons from Pakistan. Uh, and uh, that just shows how shaky the situation has become as our foreign policy under this administration continues to unravel. Um, and I've been saying it, I've said it before, I do not consider 
uh, our administration to be naive. I believe it's intentional, uh, going all the way back to their support of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and other places, and and uh, and in you know, down to the present day, present literally today with the release of the the Taliban uh, leaders. Uh, well, another big event that's taking place tomorrow is um, that President Abbas of the Palestinian Authority is going to announce the unity government Monday and uh, says, uh, even though Israel uh, warned him that will boycott the new alliance, uh, he will react to any Israeli punitive action. And, uh, and today, in fact, already Netanyahu uh, said that the Israel will probably withhold the tax revenue from the Palestinian Authority if they actually announce officially a, a union of government with Hamas, which is a recognized terrorist organization on all the worldwide lists. And, uh, and believe it or not, in Israel today, today, it says the U.S. backs Israel's rejection of the Palestinian unity government. Secretary of State John Kerry last Thursday said Israel's negative response to the formation of a Palestinian unity government including the Hamas, uh, Hamas terrorist organization, was appropriate. So I'm glad to hear that. I hope you stick with that position. Uh, and then there's another good article in Israel Today um, that's quoting uh, so former South African President uh, Frederick Wilhelm de Klerk, who led South, South Africa out of apartheid and into its present democratic system in, in the nation of uh, South Africa. Uh, and he was in Israel... Uh, this week in an interview with Channel 2 News, and he said, it is wrong for anyone to refer to Israel as an apartheid state. Uh, and he says Israel is not an apartheid state, and he's the man who would know, because <laughs> he uh, actually presided over the transition from an apartheid state in South Africa to the present conditions. Uh, and he goes on to explain why. I, I invite you to read that article in uh, Israel Today. The Times of Israel has an article also uh, yesterday about U.S. citizen carries out suicide attack in, in Syria. That's being reported in American news. Uh, it's actually a young man from Florida who took a, took a Muslim Islamic name and went to Syria and actually became a suicide bomber. Uh, his parents, I was reading an article, say, in, uh, I think it was on The Blaze, uh, saying his parents were actually... Uh, Owned several convenience stores in Florida, and uh, and the father dressed in a long white uh, gown type of thing, and his mother dressed in the in the uh, burqa, and only her face was uncovered. Uh, so uh, this is a, an American, the first time an American in Syria has uh, been a suicide bomber, and that's obviously very serious. And then another event that happened last week when uh, uh, four people were killed in Brussels uh, in a Jewish museum. Uh, and the murderer now has been exposed to actually also have been a Syrian jihadi. Uh, and he uh, came back from Syria and his training in Syrian indoctrination and actually murdered four Jews in Brussels. And uh, that, that has now been uh, come out and been proven in several different ways. So, uh, and that headline uh, actually in the paper was, In Brussels, the first of Syrian jihadis comes home to roost. And that's an issue. There, there are actually over 100 Americans fighting uh, with Al Qaeda in Syria, and and receiving actual war uh, experience. Imagine when they come home from the war with their U.S. passports, uh, what uh, the threat is in America. Uh, we're living very serious days. Then there's a good article about Egypt in the Times of Israel. It says, I like the headline. Uh, this is it's about the story of the. General Assisi has been elected president with a overwhelming like 90% of the vote. But the headline says, in Egypt, the dawn of an old day. <laughs> it's not a new day in Egypt, it's an old day because it's uh, the ability of new president Sisi to deal with jihadists and the economy will determine the country's fate. And it's going back to the military rule of Egypt, which is the condition it was before the so-called Arab Spring slash winter. And, uh, and of course, according to Isaiah 19, the leadership in Israel is going to become more and more evil and violent and destructive. And uh, need to read Isaiah 19 because at the end, the good news is uh, they actually turn to the God of Israel and, and God sends the Savior, the Messiah, and they get they turn to the Lord in the end. But not until an awful lot of bad things happen in Egypt. Another article on the Times of Israel: Hamas pays pays 
hundreds of youths to harass Jews at the Temple Mount. You hear about the Jews coming out of the mosque, the young kids coming out of the mosque throwing rocks uh, at people on the Temple Mount, and sometimes even over down to the Western Wall where Jews are praying. Well, now it's been revealed that they've been on salary with, with Hamas uh, being paid to do this. And uh, it's something that the fundraising for Hamas actually ends up ending up paying for those young people. Um, also this week, uh, Israel actually managed to catch a suicide bomber who got in the, uh, he's, uh, in the northern West Bank. And, uh, and they actually caught him with a suicide vest before he's able to uh, blow himself up and, and uh, create a tragedy. That sort of stepping up the, uh, the stuff going on in the, on that side of the fence, and it's very serious. Also some good news, a Sudan woman facing death for being a Christian, basically. Uh, it's, it's been announced that she'll be released within days. We need to pray that she will. Her husband is released. She just had a baby girl a couple days ago in her prison cell. She has a two-year-old who lives with her in the prison cell. They're all considered apostate. She's considered apostate because she was born Muslim and became a Christian. And that is a, a, a capital offense in Sudan to be executed. But before they're going to execu execute her, their plan was to give her a, a hundred lashes and then hang her. But praise God, it says they're going to release her. I, I hope that'll be true. Uh, and then a, a synagogue in the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem's old city, Israel Today reports that this uh, synagogue that was destroyed in 1948 is going to be rebuilt. It was founded in 1872, the Tiferet Israel Synagogue, uh, was uh, is going to be uh, rebuilt, and it's actually stirring up resistance already in among the Muslims because when it's rebuilt to its original size and it's in the in the you know when it's done when it's finished, it'll actually be higher than the Temple Mount buildings, the mosque and so forth, and uh, that's creating a problem for Islam because they want to have the tallest building in town. You know that's what they do. And then finally, one more good report, uh, an Israeli professor, a uh, prominent Israeli professor writing in the free Israeli daily newspaper, Israel Hayom, uh, continues the trend of Jews both here and abroad, rec reclaiming Jesus and even the New Testament as their own. Uh, he actually declares that the New Testament is a Jewish text in a purely scholarly and academic context. He said, even though people reject Jesus as the Messiah, there's no doubt that the New Testament was completely written by Jewish people and has all the Jewish idioms and so forth. Interesting article in Israel today. So I always like to try to finish with good news. <laughs> uh, well, a lot's going on this week. Uh, Doreen and I are going to be uh, ministering next Sunday in uh, Conway, New Hampshire, and the following Sunday in Dover, New Hampshire. And uh, I hope you'll continue to pray for us, and I hope, hopefully I'll be putting out a video all, any the next two weeks, even while we're traveling. Well, let's end with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your uh, clarification by your Holy Spirit and prophetically through the Bible of what's going on in the world and knowing that, that you're in control. You're restoring Israel, bringing the true peace to Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we pray for rains to keep falling in your holy land. In the name of your uh, son, Yeshua, we pray and, and thank you. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.